And now, suspense. dreams, George, all night long. I remember trying to wake up, but I couldn't get my eyes open. Did you ever dream that you were awake, but you couldn't get your eyes open, George? Why, no, I, I don't believe I ever did. Why don't you call Dr. Brill? Dr. Brill. Is there any use telling somebody that it's just their nerves when they're sensitive and high strung and can't help themselves? I don't think Dr. Brill understands my kind of woman. You know, dear, you're too... Oh, dear. Spare ribs last night. You're too sensitive, sweetheart. I wish I could be like the others, George. I'd give anything to be able to talk about the roast. Or how much it costs for the kitchen curtains. But it's just not me, George. I know, darling. You'll never know what it meant to me last summer when Mrs. Dean asked me to act in that play. Yes, but you know, you took it too hard. The minute the curtain fell, you had a nervous breakdown. Anybody want any more grizzle cakes, <laughs> Mr. Thomas? Oh, I've had too many now. If I get sick, I'll know whom to blame. Oh. Why? You haven't touched a thing on your plate, Mrs. Thomas. I'm just not hungry. Well, if anybody wants any more, <laughs> there's plenty. <laughs> Isn't she an old dear, George? Oh, yes, she's fine. Well, I'm not going to make any money just sitting here. Now, you be a good little girl while I'm gone, eh? I'm always a good girl, John. <laughs> oh, dear me. I only got nine minutes to make the 8.12. Bye-bye, dear. Goodbye. Oh, I shouldn't have had that last little cake. Bye-bye, <coughs> sweet. Well, he has got a good appetite. dreadful dreams, George, all night long. I remember trying to wake up, but I couldn't get my eyes open. Did you ever dream that you were awake, but you couldn't get your eyes open, George? Why, no, I, I don't believe I ever did. Why don't you call Dr. Brill? Dr. Brill. Is there any use telling somebody that it's just their nerves when they're sensitive and high strung and can't help themselves? I don't think Dr. Brill understands my kind of woman. You know, dear, you're too... Oh, dear. Spare ribs last night. You're too sensitive, sweetheart. I wish I could be like the others, George. I'd give anything to be able to talk about the roast, or how much it costs for the kitchen curtains. But it's just not me, George. I know, darling. You'll never know what it meant to me last summer when Mrs. Dean asked me to act in that play. Yes, but you know, you took it too hard. The minute the curtain fell, you had a nervous breakdown. Anybody want any more grizzle cakes, Mr. Thomas? <laughs> oh, I've had too many now. If I get sick, I'll know whom to blame. Oh. 
Why? You haven't touched a thing on your plate, Mrs. Thomas. I'm just not hungry. Well, if anybody wants any more, <laughs> there's plenty. <laughs> Isn't she an old dear, George? Oh, yes, she's fine. Well, I'm not going to make any money just sitting here. Now, you be a good little girl while I'm gone, eh? I'm always a good girl, George. <laughs> oh, dear me, I only got nine minutes to make the 8.12. Bye-bye, dear. Goodbye. Oh, I shouldn't have had that last little shake. Bye-bye, <coughs> sweet. Well... He has got a good appetite. Wouldn't you like those Brazilians? What are they up to now? They thought up another new band, and I just last week learned the samba. The Brazilian capital of the... No way, my dear. What do you think of that puzzling woman? That Mrs. Anderson. Don't tell me they found her. Found her? The police? <laughs> All the police can say is that she's somewhere in the vicinity and she may apply for a position as a cook. A cook. Now I am. She supports committed suicide or something. I vaguely remember something about a tweed coat floating on the bay. Oh, don't you believe it? That kind never commits suicide. I'm sure I don't know what we pay the police for. Mm -hmm. One whole month now since they found that nice old man stretched out on the linoleum. I heard that when somebody dies of arsenic poisoning, the soles of their feet get all dry and curly. You. I just came in for late. Oh, well then, um, I'll put those flowers in water for you, sir. Oh, thank you. A little surprise for Mrs. Thomas. How was she today? Well, she had a bit of an headache, poor dear. I told her to go and have a nice lay down on the couch. Oh, dear, dear. Well, I'll just go and have a look at her. Well, I hope she's feeling better, sir. I've made her a nice cake and kidney pie. Oh, nice and light. Oh. Just the way she likes it. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'll just go and see how our invalid is doing now. Yes, sir. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, dear. <laughs> You're home early. Yes, dear. And how is my little angel face feeling now? I had another headache today, George. Oh, you poor, poor thing. Well, I have some news that ought to cheer you up a bit. I met Mrs. Dean today, and she said that people are still talking about the hit you made in that play, Romance, last summer. How nice. You know, you and her son positively brought the house down. Will you join me? No, thanks, dear. We'd better not put Mrs. Sutton waiting. No. Say, she cooks very nicely, doesn't she? Yes. Now, you see how foolish you were to be worried about her references. Oh, yes, I see I was. Still, to be on the safe side, you know, you're supposed to. Uh... I know. But if she'd been looking after a widowed mother all these years, she couldn't very well have references, could she? No. But it wouldn't have done any harm to speak to the minister of her parish about it. Well, what would the minister know about her cooking? Mm -hmm. After all, is the cooking that counts. Dinner's quite ready to be served, ma'am. I don't think that pile ought to stay in the oven any longer. Thank you, Mrs. Sutton. George, did you bring your flowers for me? Why, of course, darling. Thank you.
<coughs> Why is it? The thing you look for is always at the... What's this? Oh, for sake. Now, where's the car? Well, that was pretty stupid of you, old boy. Even the tiniest grain under your fingernail can... Uh, I'd better warn Mrs. Sutton, too. Oh, you don't mean it. You can't mean it. It's too preposterous. It's not at all preposterous, my dear. I said to them right out. If the community theater is going to produce Camille, there's only one person to play the part, and that's Ethel Thompson. Mm -hmm. I think your mother's flattering me, Bob. She can't mean it. Well, no, of course she means it. Well, if I'm to play Camille, who is to be Armand? You, Bob? Well, I... I don't know. I, uh, wanted to talk to you about that, Ethel. I don't think I ought to let Bob do any more plays this winter. He's fallen so far behind in his law studies. I think there must be a girl someplace. Where's George? Oh, he's probably still out digging in the garden. Ethel, did you know they dug up the father? What father? The poisoning woman's father. Oh, how dreadful. Well, the terrible thing is that nobody knows what she looks like. She could be anybody. She could be a waitress in a restaurant, a maid. She could be your own cook. Oh, what a dreadful thing to say about our poor Mrs. Sutton. Well, she doesn't look as if she could feed poison to a fly. Mrs. Sutton. Oh, uh, you wanted to put my egg beater into your tool chest, would you, Mr. Thomas? By mistake. Your egg beater? Well, I thought it might have got all mixed up with your gardening tool. <laughs> I was always ready to make a batter for a nice layer cake. Mrs. Thomas is very fond of layer cake. Oh, yes. Well, it'll probably turn up. Oh. I just wanted to tell you that uh, I won't be home for dinner tonight. Oh, won't you, sir? No, a little bachelor celebration. A friend of mine is getting married. So I'll probably be quite late. Oh, I should think 11 or 12 at least. Oh, well, isn't that nice? You'll, uh, you'll take good care of Mrs. Thomas for me, won't you? Oh, yes, sir. I'll take very special care of Mrs. Thomas. Splendid.
Oh, George. Did you have a good time at the party? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I... I had a wonderful time. That's nice. Did Mrs. Sutton leave something hot for you? She said she would. Oh, yes, she did. But I... I only drank a little. I wasn't thirsty. Oh, it was that kind of a party, was it? Yes. Oh, do come to bed, George. I'm awfully sleepy. Not even your orange juice. No. How about some nice fresh toast, sir? No, thank you. I, I'm not very hungry this morning. Oh. And there's Mrs. Thomas sleeping the nice morning away. How about me taking her some nice hot coffee, sir? Oh, no. No, I wouldn't wake her. She didn't sleep so well last night. Oh, what a pity. Yes. Would you like me to open your egg for you, sir? Oh, no. no, thank you very much. I, uh... Oh! I have an early appointment. I'm... I'm terribly late now. Your hat, sir? Oh, yes. I... I must hurry. waiting for. It's four o'clock. I hope I'm not too late. I was crazy to take a chance. I should have fired her there and then. Why didn't Ethel answer the phone? Where was she? Oh, please, don't let me be too late. something that I must tell you. Well, what is it? Well, you're not to be excited, and you're not to be frightened. The police have been called for. The police? Oh, George, what is it? Tell me at once what's happened. Well, it's something quite unpleasant. Mrs. Sutton. Oh, George, for pity's sake. Oh, man. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't know you were home. What is it, Mrs. Sutton? They caught her, Mrs. Thomas. Caught who? The poison woman. They did? When? Where? It was the young man of the grocer's from Amagansett. And they caught her. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful, George? They caught her. Oh, so what do you think about her? Running around loose? She got herself a job as housekeeper to two elderly ladies. They found the poison on her. 
Well, if you'll excuse me, ma'am, I want to run up the block and tell my girlfriend. Oh, she's been ever so worried. That's all. That... That cocoa last night? Yes? I had it analyzed. How dared you? Why did you want to kill me? Is this someone else? A long time ago, I said, George, I said, can't you eat one meal? Can't you even eat a slice of toast without... I warned you, George. I said, George, I can't stand to hear you digest one more meal. I'm sensitive. Everyone knows I'm sensitive. You heard Mrs. Dean. She said there's no one else to play Camille. Bob is going to be our mom. I think she suspects, though, George. She said there was a girl in his life. After all, George, I am much closer to Bob's age than I am to yours. It's too bad Bob wasn't aware of it. What do you mean? Last night, your Armand eloped with the girl for whom he's been neglecting his studies. It's not true, George. It's not true. It's in the morning paper. But he couldn't. Oh, we were going to play Camille. We we're going to start rehearsing. George, how could you? 